as far as when I joined the military, um, Chip and I talked about this. I mean, I have to be honest and say I look at the institution itself now um, as a total, uh, uh, as a monstrosity uh, that creates monstrosities. The institution, while going through training, is a dehumanizing uh, experience not only for the people who go through the training itself because you're being turned into a killer. We have to be very honest here. We pretend as though the military is like a jobs program. It's college benefits. You can learn job skills there. It, you know, trying to shift the way people have thought about the military. At, at essence, what the military is, of course, is an institution for death and destruction. So what you're taking is 17, 18, 19-year-old kids you're putting them through 13 weeks of boot camp training. You're putting them through eight weeks of school and infantry training. And after uh, those 20 weeks of training, people are ready to kill. Uh, and you're ready to kill on command. And that's what you're meant to do. You're meant to be a mindless machine. You follow orders. That's what the military is all about. You don't think for yourself. You don't have agency. You're not a human being. You're a cog in a gigantic machine and for those who have power and wealth, of course, you're just another number. And for the generals, you're just a body. You know, that's why we used to refer to other Marines as bodies. Like, yeah, we need more bodies here. You know, get more bodies on the ground. Get more boots on the ground. You're not a person. You're a boot. You know, get more boots on the ground. Um, and what's inherent to that training? Well, people in the Middle East are referred to as sand niggers, hajis, camel jockeys, towel heads, barbarians, terrorists. Uh, women, bitches, cunts, women marines, uh, referred to as WMs, walking mattresses. Um, that's why one in three women who are coming back from military service are reporting military sexual trauma, because their fellow brothers are actually raping them while they're in the service. That's one in three. It's not far removed from the one in four women in America who already report sexual trauma throughout their lives, or have experienced it at least once. So, again, firmly entrenched in the military culture and in the institution is patriarchy. And homophobia. Of course, everyone is referred to as a faggot, a uh, queer, a uh, pussy, a cunt. Um, again, reinforcing that you're weak, of course, if you're gay, bisexual, queer, so on and so forth. All firmly entrenched in the training, all firmly entrenched in the ideology, and all firmly entrenched in the kind of linguistics and, and, and the lexicon within the military. In Iraq, as was talked about in the film, uh, what did we do? We went on house raids, patrolled, either waited to get blown up by IEDs or mortars, because tactically it's insane. Everybody knows that you cannot win a counterinsurgency war, whatever winning would be. It's never happened. You can talk to the British who've been to Malaysia. You could talk to the French who've been to the Algiers. You could talk to the Americans and Australians and the rest who've been to Vietnam and Korea. And the Soviets in Afghanistan and the United States in Afghanistan and Iraq and every single time militarily have had their asses kicked, and rightfully so, um, but have also caused tremendous amounts of death and destruction, as Chip mentioned. A million Iraqis dead. Uh, seven million Iraqis displaced within a country of 25 to 30 million people. An entire generation lost. People forget that when there's a war for 10 years, kids don't go to school. You don't develop. You drop depleted uranium-coated rounds that have a half-life of X amount of billion years, and so now you have birth defects in towns like Ramadi and Fallujah that are 500% what they were 10 years ago. We've absolutely devastated that country, the United States and the West. After 30 years of warfare, supporting both sides in the eight-year war with Iran and Iraq, the Gulf War, the sanctions throughout the 90s that Madeleine Albright and Bill Clinton said were worth it. 500,000 dead, women and children, Madeleine Albright on news, 10 o'clock news. Yeah, it's worth it. Absolutely. Um, what was happening over there? Uh, we were killing people. I mean, we were killing innocent people. Uh, people were being taken captive. If they looked like a quote-unquote insurgent, uh, you did what you wanted to do with them. We were in western Iraq, Al-Anbar province, 
a town called al Qaim, uh, just south of the Euphrates and just east of the Syrian border. It was a free-for-all. There was no media there. There was no one to look after you. And the Marines took it upon themselves to shoot at, beat, rob, rape, kill, whoever they wanted to. And that's being proposed on the news as like a few bad apples. This is a very isolated incident. The work that we've done in Iraq Veterans Against the War has, I think, shattered those inclinations and thoughts uh, because in those narratives, as we showed in 2008 when we had over 100 veterans who served throughout the course of six years during the war in different geographical areas, in different branches of the service, in different units, during different time periods, in different jobs, all of this was taking place everywhere throughout Iraq, and it wasn't being reported. Some of it was coming from high up in command, uh, and others were taking it upon themselves.